You are looking live at Ray and Sue Smith Stadium here at the campus of Hope College on a rainy Saturday afternoon here. But nonetheless, we're ready for football. I'm Clayton Safey alongside Fermin Duran, uh, ready to bring you some action between Hope College and Adrian College on homecoming here for Hope. And uh, shapes up to be a very good ball game here today between the 4-1 and one Hope College team and 2-0 and oh in the conference and the Adrian Bulldogs, who are 2-3 and three overall and 1-0 and oh in conference play here in the MIAA. So a big game for both teams with conference implications all over the place as Hope runs onto the field underneath that banner led by Coach Peter Sturzman in his second season. And for me, and I'll bring you in here. What are you excited to, to look for here today in, in this, this afternoon's game? Obviously, what we want to see is a Hope College win today. Uh, it's a homecoming game, like you said. Um, it's a beautiful day for football. When is it not a good day for football, Clayton? Um, Couldn't agree more. We're ready. We're ready. Um, the offense is looking great, led by the rushing attack of uh, Brandon Campbell. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what we can do today. Yeah, absolutely. And this Adrian team comes in with a very high potent offense. They're averaging 483 yards per game, uh, which is massive, and 308 rush yards. So this team uh, is going to be ready for a shootout here, and Hope College uh, likes to do the same thing. They put up a lot of points this season, and like Fermin said, they're led by that rushing attack, and mostly Brandon Campbell, number 38. So keep an eye on him this afternoon. He will be getting a lot of carries, and he's going to get that high volume amount of carries, and a lot of the game will be rested on his shoulders. Also, Mason Oppel, the quarterback for Hope College, uh, who's been very efficient, especially coming on lately, throwing the football. Oppel, on the season, completing 60% of his passes. He has eight touchdowns on the year. And of course, like we talked about, Campbell, just nearing 800 yards on the season already, 795. He's averaging 7.5 yards per carry, uh, so that is big. It is rainy here, but it was rainy last week for Hope College and their victory um, a week a week ago today. Uh, so they'll be used to that here, and we'll keep an eye on uh, the rainy conditions uh, as the night goes along. They actually moved the start time up from six o'clock for me, uh, just to try to beat some of this uh, storm here, the thunder and lightning, and hopefully it'll just stick to uh, wet conditions, but nothing, uh, no thunder and lightning that'll delay us here. No, and I um, I think that I mean we obviously won't be able to beat the rain, but Hopefully we do beat that thunderstorm that's uh, coming. Um, I think uh, Mason Noppel has done a great job this year, a, a transfer from Davenport, um, doing a great job leading the offense. And uh, I'm excited to see how we do against uh, the high-powered offense of Adrian. Yeah, absolutely. How, the def how our defense reacts to that. There's no question for me, and we're ready for kickoff here as Darren Ford will – Put the ball on the tee, and he'll boot it away here to begin this game. Darren Ford, the ever-so-steady kicker for this Hope College team. And handles all the duties, kicking off, punting, and the place kicking. So uh, he was name, his name will be called a lot here this afternoon as well. And Ford is setting up. Crowd is on their feet here at Rain Sue Smith Stadium. Would be probably a bigger crowd here for homecoming if it weren't for the rain. But here we are. Ford boots it down. That is fielded at Adrian's own three-yard line. It's taken over the 25-yard line, and they'll set up shop here, Adrian, in their own territory as Hope's defense will run on the field. This Adrian team has a very high potent offense, like we mentioned in the open, and we'll keep an eye on uh, how they're going to do offensively this afternoon. We expect them to bring everything they, they can at this Hope defense. Uh, which has held steady all season long. You can always, you can always expect um, the Hope defensive line to do a good job. Um, they've been a strength of this team all year. Um, and, and, I mean, I guess we'll see as the game goes on how we react to their hot fired offense. That's a handoff on the left side, and that is going to be a loss for Adrian on the first play from scrimmage. So another notable thing here in today's game, Clayton Euchre injured last week. So Hunter Ham, the sophomore, will be at quarterback for Adrian as they line up quick to the line. And that last rush was by Emmanuel Stewart. Fumbled snap. 
ball came loose, and that will be recovered by the Bulldogs, but not before a big loss. And this is going to bring up a long third down. And, and you can see the miscommunication there. Um, the snap count is very, very important. You don't want to, if you miss anything in the snap count, you, you're going to lose the ball like that, and it's going to cause problems. You don't, if you're Adrian, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot to start the game. Yeah, and especially mistakes like that are, are going to be big in a game with this much rain as well. Ham hands it off. That is Emmanuel Stewart, and he is shut down after a gain of about a couple. That's going to bring up fourth down and long, and that'll bring up the punt team here for Adrian. And a great job by the Hope College defense of three and out to start this game. That's very important um, to, to get that first defensive stop and to do so in the first three plays. Yeah, and that's big for their confidence. So we will see Alex Van Vliet back deep to return for Hope College. We will see Stephen St. Kerr. Excuse me, that's Connor Storms, the punter for Adrian. And that will be a short punt, and Hope will set up shop with some very good field position. That ball will be spotted at the 47 of the Flying Dutchman. So not a bad start for Hope. You not get at the, all. You get the, uh, the fumble <coughs> recovered by Adrian, but they lost a lot of yards, and that's going to help. It could be a field position type game here tonight for me. And you could see the defense, the electricity that they brought out right away. Um, special teams, a great job of rushing the punter there, almost getting the block. Um, I love the electricity that I'm seeing from Hope uh, to start this game. So hopefully it carries over to the offense. Oppel in the pistol formation. He's going to hand off. This is Chris Lee right up the middle and he's dragging defenders he's over the 50 yard line and he's going to bring it into adrian territory that ball is spotted at the 48 of adrian good first down run for hope college is going to bring up a second down and five and a great job of the offensive line to push the running back uh, a couple extra yards there that's always important absolutely chris kelly is the h back lined up left of apple who has lee behind him hands it off over the left side this is a sweep all the way out. And that is shut down there by the Adrian defense right there. Hope just trying to stretch them out and uh, nothing really doing there. That tackle was made by Chris Adams, the junior free safety. So now both Chris Lee and Brandon Campbell on the field for Hope College, the two running backs, the two headed attack uh, that they run. We'll see what they come out with here. They're in a shotgun formation. Campbell to the left of Oppel, Lee to his right. Three wide receivers, no tight ends. Oppel takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to run and drag in defenders. Good enough for the first down and down to the 41-yard line. That'll be a first down, Hope College. And a good play call by the offensive coordinator here. Um, a, a good move there put on by Mason Oppel. He's a very mobile quarterback, and that's very important to this offense. Yeah, and they trust him making those reads in this offense as well. And Mason Oppel, you like to compare him to a guy like Tim Tebow. Not not in all the skills, and of course, I mean, the Heisman winner and former NFL quarterback, but the style of play for me, very, very the similar. The tenacity and the composure he has at the quarterback position. Yeah, is I've, I've heard that comparison a lot from, from players on this team. There's Oppel there, hands it off over the left side. Campbell's got running room over the 35-yard line, pushed out of bounds at the 30, and that will be just short of a first down, very close. That'll bring up second down and short, and that's an offensive coordinator's dream right there. Second and one, uh, you can really open up the playbook for me. You really can, and most importantly, they're doing a good job of blocking. And now they, actually, they actually are going to move the chains here and call that a first down and 10 for Hope College, so even better uh, if you're – the Hope coaching staff. So, Here's Oppel on the shotgun. Yep, he's in the gun with Campbell to his right. Fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right. Still looking, and he's just going to run down that right sideline. Did get away from one tackler. Will pick up a few, so that'll bring up second down. And like I talked about earlier, um, the composure that Mason Oppel has took his time, didn't rush the throw, saw that he had no receivers open, was able to slip away from that tackle and get at least three yards on that play. And plays like that are very important in this game. Absolutely. We go back to the pistol set here. Logan Shadaya will be the H back to Oppel's right. Campbell behind him. 
Hopple hands off over the left side again. And Campbell will run over one guy, but will go down with him at the 26 yard line. He's gonna bring down a third down and five. And we do have an injured Bulldog down on the field and their medical staff will come out and attend to him. And for me, we're seeing early on Hope sticking to their bread and butter, which is running the football. And Brandon Campbell's getting a lot of the load. You saw Mason Oppel get a big run there to pick up a first down. And they're gonna stick to what they have. Oppel did look to throw on that last one, but with the rain, it's gonna be key that he can get out of the pocket and be mobile. And we've seen that already early on. And if you're Hope, it's always good to get your best players involved right away and get them going to start this football game. So you already see Mason Oppel already making good choices, already showing that composure he has. Um, and Brandon Campbell as well, getting away for a 12 yard run earlier. Um, he, he's already had an impact in this game and, and it's, that's very important. It's always important to get your key players involved right away so they can continually make an impact throughout this game. Absolutely, and a big third down for Adrian's defense here. They're gonna look to force Darren Ford to come on for a pretty long field goal here as we have a third down and five early on in this first quarter. Apple's gonna be in the shotgun with Campbell to his right, three wide receivers. Two to his left. Oppel takes a snap. He's going to take it himself. Design run. He's not going to get to the first down marker. Does pick up about two yards. It's going to bring up a fourth and three. And Hope is going to bring on their field goal team. And that's just a trust that they have in Darren Ford, a guy that's made a 45-yarder on the year. Uh, that's his career long. Uh, and Ford is 71% with his field goals. So this is definitely not out of his range. He's a good kicker. He's been a special teams player of the week before. Um, and we'll see if he can put this one through the uprights. Yep, so this is going to be a 41-yarder for Darren Ford. Let's try to put Hope on the board. A couple guys rush through, and, but Darren Ford's kick is up and through the uprights. So it'll be 3-0 Hope College here as Darren Ford knocks one through. And that looked like it could have been good from 50, Clayton. That was a boot by Darren Ford. And he's, he's got a big leg. There's no question about it. And that's the trust they have in him to to make a 41 yarder out there in these conditions and they're gonna they're gonna need that pointer uh, could possibly be hard to come by in today's game we'll see how it plays out but anytime the conditions are like this uh, any points are good to have absolutely it's good to start this game by uh, getting on the scoreboard here um, <clears throat> and now it's up to the defense once again yeah we'll see what Adrian can do here uh, when they're on offense Emmanuel Stewart they gave it to him twice. He only got three yards, and they did have that fumbled snap with the miscommunication and uh, lost 13 yards on that. And so that was big for Hope's field position. And we'll see Darren Ford come on once again on the kick team for Hope College. Ford boots it to the seven yard line of Adrian. Over the left side, that's Walker. Whistle's blown, they're gonna rule him down by forward progress at the 26 yard line. And so Walker with the return there. And Hope College defense will come on once again. They had a big stand in their first possession defensively with the three and out. And, it, and we'll see what the defense does here. I think it's very important to, to keep Adrian out of the scoreboard once again. The first two possessions, if they're able to do that, they can put a stop on this football game and, and really um, you know, show what's, what's going to look uh, for the rest of the game. Here's Ham. What it's going to look like. He throws over. That ball is dropped. They're going to call it incomplete. It was near the line of scrimmage on a screen play there. They had trips out to the left. And this Adrian team coming off of a loss at Lakeland, 47-40. to 40 and Lakeland's a team that came in here to Hope earlier in the season. And, and they've lost a lot of close games this year, Adrian yeah. has. And Lakeland's a team that came in and showed a really unorthodox look. And that play right there reminded me of Lakeland, running trips outside, running a lot of bubble screens out there. So maybe they took that from their playbook. They're going to have four wide receivers out here. Ham is in the shotgun. Takes a snap, hands it off right up the middle. And Nutter will be the ball carrier. He's going to be brought down by Griffin Weigel for Hope College. It's going to be a third down and five. Crowd is on their feet here at Ray Suit 
Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. And Hope looking to get their second third and out of the game. Adrian looking to pick up their first down. First first down. Here's Ham in the gun. Two wide receivers either side running back to his left. Ham's going to hand it off over the right side. He's going to be short. That's going to be a fourth down here upcoming. Griffin Weigel and Ian Gorgensen on the tackle for Hope College. And a great job once again by the defensive line here. Um, really not, not allowing um, anything from the, from the Asian running backs here. Um, and that's very important. Like I said, it's one of the strengths of this football team. If they continue to prevent the run. That's a line drive kick. Bounces at the 31-yard line. Van Vliet picks it up. He weaves his way over the 35, and he'll get it up to the 39-yard line. And Hope will set up there with another good shot at some decent field position here as they start their second drive. They got the field goal on the first one for me. And Darren Ford was able to punch it through and get some points for this Hope College team right Let's now. Let's get a touchdown, though. Yeah, and that's, that's what they're hoping for at this point as they start at their own 39. Mason Oppel leading the troops out there on the field. <laughs> Christian Boss is the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Oppel is in the shotgun with Campbell to his right. He's going to drop straight back. Throws. And that pass is complete to Curtis Slank for a first down over the 50-yard line and into Adrian Bulldog territory. First down, Hope College. And a good play call there by the offensive coordinator. Uh, Slink it, being able to run that route perfectly and create a space to get that easy first down here for Hope. <coughs> That's actually a correction. That was Ryan Veenstra, the wide receiver, who caught that. Apologies to him, and he's going to catch another one as Oppel throws over to his right side and complete for a gain of about four. It's going to bring up second down for Hope. But they're looking for those easy pitch and catches for me that are going to get them yards outside of the running game and mix it up for this Adrian defense to keep them on their toes. And it's always good, like you said, to mix up the play calls. You don't want to be, become a one-dimensional football team. Um, and I think having Mason Offwood as a quarterback helps a lot with that. Absolutely. He's in the pistol set, drops straight back to throw. Throws again. That ball almost intercepted. It was dropped. An easy pick. And there is a flag on the play, game. though. That was Eli Villalobos, who just dropped that one. He's beside himself. Like you said, flag down on the field, so we'll see what the call is here. But he had some running room, and if he caught that, he probably would he have taken been it gone. to the house. And that was just a tough throw there for Mason Apple to make. They're going to pick up the flag. It's going to be no foul on the play. It's going to bring up a third down for Hope and we'll see what they go with here. Eli Villalobos almost caught that one. Like we said, he would have housed it if he kept a grasp on it here. Mason Oppel is in the shotgun. He's going to roll out to his right. Throws. He's got the first down. Ball's out though. They're going to call it incomplete. And he got railed. And that was Villa Lobos once again. Like we said, dropped that interception. Ryan Veenstra was at the first down marker, but wasn't able to corral it. And a big hit there by Adrian Villa Lobos. And Veenstra once again being able to create that space, but unable to keep control of that football, hold on to it. Very hard hit by the Adrian linebacker. And now it's now it's time to punt. Yeah, and Darren Ford back out here. and trying to pin Adrian down deep in their own territory. Ford takes a snap. This is a good kick, fair caught, fair catch signal called and it's gonna roll into the end zone for a touchback and th that ball will be spotted at the Bulldogs own 20 yard line as we'll see their third offensive possession. Haven't picked up a first down yet. A good job by the Adrian defense though couple hard hits. It's always good being a physical football team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. 
This is an offense that's able to move the ball, like we said, averaging almost 500 yards a game. They are without their usual starting quarterback, Clayton Euchre, as this is Hunter Ham here. And number 16, who sets up in the shotgun. He does have trips to his left once again. Ham takes it, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw, and that ball is short, and it will fall incomplete. He was looking for his receiver, Jaron McCaw. And as we saw early, earlier in this game, you can see the impact of um, a backup quarterback playing. It's a lot more difficult when you don't get as many snaps to, to be able to um, time that snap count perfectly. And, and you, we, we saw earlier, he fumbled the ball. Um, so we'll see how he adjusts with the center throughout this game, and we'll see if it improves at all. So here is Ham. He's going to hand it off to Stewart right up the middle, and nothing doing. Might have gained about one. Looks like gained a couple. It's going to bring up third down and long once again for Adrian. That was Emmanuel Stewart. He has not found any running room yet here tonight for this Adrian offense. So empty set here for Hunter Ham. He's got five wide receivers, three to his left, two to his right. Shotgun takes the snap, drops straight back, pressured. Throws that pass is complete and short to the and close to the first down marker. Looks like he's going to get it right at the 30 yard line. And they are going to signal for a first down. It's going to be a first down. Adrian Bulldogs, their first of tonight's game. And a good job of the tight end by stretching there and being able to get that extra yard for the first down here. An important. Uh, First down for Adrian, who's uh, who hasn't been able to move the ball throughout this game so far. And now they get a first down. And we'll see if this uh, gets their offense running. So the medical staff is attending to Hunter Ham, the quarterback there, already the backup quarterback replacing Clayton Euchre. And he's down on the field, so hopefully he can get up and continue playing here tonight. It looks like he's coming off. He is gonna walk off very slowly. So this is going to be their the third punter. string quarterback. Yeah, and he's actually the punter for this team. This is Connor Storms. He's going to be in the shotgun here with four wide receivers, two to either side, and he's got Emmanuel Stewart to his right. Storms takes the shotgun snap, fakes a handoff. He's going to throw right on his first play. That ball is complete to Jaron McGaw. And Storm's a punter for this team. I think that was his first half as a college quarterback. I think so as well, and it's definitely his first throw. 100% completion percentage for me, and you can't get any better than that. <laughs> Good start to his career for sure. He's thrown right into this ball game. He's in the shotgun set, takes a snap. He's going to hand it to Stewart over the right side. He kind of ran into his own blocker, but still... A great job by Hope's defense. Jonathan Ware was able to uh, blow that play up and absolutely assert his dominance. This Hope defensive front has been the talk of the season around Hope College. I mean, they have been so strong in, in understanding that they can stop the run. They, they can really stop uh, a huge aspect of most, te most teams here. Here's the punter, Connor Storms. In the shotgun set, takes it straight back to throw. He's pressured, throws over to his right. He finds Stewart over the 30-yard line, pushed out of bounds. Nowhere near the first down marker. It's going to bring up fourth down once again here for Adrian. We'll see what kind of decision they make here as they're at their own 35. The punt team will come out, and Storms will stay on the field here as he will boot it away, presumably. 
for Adrian. Alex Van Vliet deep to receive for Hope. And Storms did a pretty good job there. Obviously the play calling was designed so he could, he could get a couple short throws um, to get his touch, but we'll see if he continues to play quarterback throughout this game. And it's going to be a fake. fake. He's over the left side. He's got running room. He is going to end up punting it and goes way out of bounds. Shanks the punt. And that spot is is a little bit questionable. That's kind of where it was caught way out of bounds by uh, an Adrian Bulldog player on the sideline. They're going to spot it at the 40. Now they might walk it up here. And I can't say I've seen that before, Clayton. A, a they are going to walk it up here on the snap. I'm sorry about that for me. Just a weird, I mean, call by the by the Adrian offensive coordinator. I don't understand why, um, why the fake and why he decided to punt it after all. Yeah, it's kind of that rugby style punt where you run out. They gave him a read there. It looked like he was almost very near to it the line. It looked like he had a seam. Yeah. Here's Apple, and the pistol set hands it over to. Chris Lee over the left side. That play's blown up. He's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And that tackle made by Chris Adams for Adrian. It's going to bring up second down and 11. And Hope was trying to start out getting back to their run game with Chris Lee. That play, nothing doing there for Hope as it brings up second 11 like we said. Oppo is going to be in the pistol set. Here on second down, straight back to throw. Looks to his right and throws. That ball is short and incomplete. That was intended for Christian Boss. It's going to bring up third down at 11. And yeah, Christian Boss, a sophomore, a very elusive receiver um, from around the area, went to high school at Unity Christian. Um, a good player. Absolutely, one of these young guys thrown in the fire here for Hope. Here's Oppel in the pistol set again. In the passing situation for Mason Oppel. Oppel is pressured and he's going to be stripped down for a sack. It's going to bring up fourth down. They're going to punt it away. Darren Ford will come on to punt for Hope. Coming on deep to receive is Jacob Davis before the Adrian Bulldogs. This is already turning out to be a defensive football game. Only three points scored with three minutes to play in the first quarter. Hope out of their tight punt formation. Ford, an end over end punt. That's a beautiful punt bouncing inside the 15 yard line gonna be picked up at the 12. And Good job by Ford to pin them back and some poor field position here for Adrian as they take over on offense now and this Hope defense comes back on. We'll see what Adrian uh, is thinking of here with Connor Storms, the punter as their backup quarterback for today's game is now in after Ham went out. So Storms, he's two for two on today's game for five yards. They got a couple rhythm passes with him last possession. So here's Storms, takes a snap. He's gonna hand it off over the left side. It's gonna bring up second down, a gain of just a few. That was David Nutter, the ball carrier. It's gonna That was Ellsworth on the tackle. So it's going to be second down and eight here. We'll Storm. see if Adrian switches up the play call. Storms in the shotgun. Hands it off. That's another once again. Looked like the ball made it came out. Hope is signaling towards their way that they had it. And it's going to be marked down and it's going to stay with Adrian here. But nothing doing with that run there by Nutter. It's going to bring up third down. He may gain to half a yard, but nothing more. Grass Lake last night, Michigan Center. They had the Warriors. They 
Storms is pressured. He's hit and the ball comes out. And Hope College is going to have it. He was clocked back there by Zach Telfor. And Storms did a good job of uh, slipping up and he looked like he was about to throw it. Absolutely. And a great hit there. And, and, and fumble recovery, most importantly that's there. That's very tough if you're Connor Storms, a guy that's came into this game expecting to be the punter and just to be the quarterback in an emergency situation. But he was thrown into that situation very early on. Right there, he, he knows ball security is key, but when you're not taking those quarterback snaps every day, and that's not an easy thing to do. Is he got hit hard from behind by Zach Telfor. Ball came out, and Hope College will have great field position here with the ball spotted at the Adrian Bulldog 15-yard line. Oppel takes a snap right up the middle to Campbell. And he's going to be stuffed. He may gain a half a yard. That's going to bring up second down and long for Hope College. They were trying to get a quick hitting run play there to Brandon Campbell. Brandon Campbell, that was his third rush on the game. Just 12 yards for him, so he's averaging four carry. Opples in the pistol once again. Two wide receivers to his left, one to his right. Campbell behind him. Should I as the H back? Takes a snap, fakes the handoff, throws to his left. Finds his man. That's Boss inside the five yard line, pushed out of bounds. Close to the first down. He's over the first down yardage, and it will be a first and goal for Hope College. And a good job by Christian Boss there to create the space and almost break free for the touchdown, putting Hope in a very good position here to score. And as we see the clock. Winding down here in this first quarter. We'll see if Hope gets up the line. Looks like they will run another play here. Opples in the pistol, under five seconds now. Three on the clock. Takes it, hands off to Campbell over the right side and he's brought down for a loss. That'll bring up second down and goal here as we will shift over to the other side of the field and Hope will have their second down play on the other end here. But they lead 3-0 going into the second quarter. And they've continued to uh, to mix it up offensively for me. I mean, you see the run game. They're going to pound the ball with Brandon Campbell. They're going to pound the ball with Chris Lee. But they've also had the ability and shown that they can get some easy pitch and catch throws from Mason Oppel. A lot of hook routes uh, on the outside that have opened things up and uh, really exploited the soft coverage that Adrian's coming with on some zone plays. And a great job, like you said, of, of mixing the play calls here. Um, good job of executing the passing plays. Um, and it's, it's always good to bring a, a different dynamic to the offense. Um, it's proven to be a, a very physical football game from the start. Um, but Hope's defense is doing a great job of keeping Agent from really moving the chains at all this game. So fresh 15 minutes on the clock here. The second quarter will start in a few minutes and uh, Hope College knocking on the door for some more points and they'd like to punch this one in for a touchdown. And that would do a lot to the confidence of this football team to go up by 10 points to start this game. So right now at the 50 yard line in front of the Hope College bench. The Hope College is thrilled to the pastor, president, member of the military, and thank them for their service of our country. Today they're recognizing Warren DeWitt, class of 1950. After enrolling at Hope College, Mr. DeWitt entered the Navy in 1949 as an aviation cadet and in the Caribbean during the Korean War. He flew extensive missions over water to extend the Navy radar and hunt enemy subs in the water. After completing his service, Mr. DeWitt returned to Hope College to complete his degree and was a member of the undefeated Flying Dutchman football team in 1953. Mr. DeWitt became a global marketing director for Black Mirror Pump in West Michigan. And so we thank Mr. DeWitt for his service and his service to our country. And that's always awesome to see. Uh, you got to respect the military. Absolutely, a complete, 
class act there by Hope College, um, recognizing and what a story. The great well. alumni, what a story, yeah. Yeah, he's one of the story guys that built this Hope College football program. Second down and goal now for Hope. Pistol set here for Mason Oppel. Campbell behind him. Logan Shadaya is the H back to his right. Chris Kelly is the H back to his left. Oppel, he's going to run the option. Pitches it out to Brandon Campbell. He's stripped down at the two yard line. Going to bring up third and goal from the two. But that's a great play call by Hope College. You have a guy in Mason Oppel that's mobile enough and has power near the goal line to get him in himself. He read that play perfectly, and Brandon Campbell was just brought down at the two-yard line in a sure tackle. And Campbell, a very physical running back, um, getting getting a couple extra yards after uh, the initial hit there, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're running right up the middle here, Clayton. So hope in this power package, they have Jake Kozlowski, the tight end, lined up to the left, both H-backs in. Pistol set for Oppel. He's going to design run over the left side, and he's going to power in. Touchdown, Hope College. That is Mason Oppel, a two-yard run out of the pistol set, and that was pure dominance by the Hope College offensive line, which carved out a hole, and Oppel found it and snuck into the end zone. And the offensive line has done a great job so far this game of giving Oppel time and a great and giving him holes as well as Campbell uh, to be able to, you know, move the chains here. And a great touchdown here, 10. Hope College up nine points, and after this extra point, hopefully 10. Um, up double digits to start this second quarter. Um, that's always important for the confidence of this team. Yep, and here's Darren Ford for the extra point. He punches it through. That's his 21st made extra point on the season. And 10-0 Hope College now as they take a double-digit lead early on in this second quarter. And Mason Oppel, five carries on the night, 12 yards, up at the one touchdown. He's shown that he can make key run plays with, and make plays with his feet which is going to be very, very important for this Hope team. And he's done it all year. That's one of the reasons why he took over this starting job. So Ford will run down to the other side of the field to kick off here from the 35-yard line. Deep to receive for Adrian is Jacob Davis and Foster Walker. They're standing at their own five-yard line. Ford sets up. Kicks it away, end over end kick. That one's gonna be fielded at the 11-yard line. This is Davis, he's over the left side, over the 25-yard line. Shut down there by a host of Hope College Flying Dutchman. And that ball will be spotted, it looks like the 26 yard line and a great job there again by the kickoff team um, not allowing not allowing the the Adrian um, returner here from getting more than than 20 yards and it's always important to always uh, start uh, before the 30 yard line you give them a long yeah give them long drives yeah and special teams it's not the most key part of the game but when you have bad special teams it's it's glaring and that was a good play there so this is Ham. He started the game at quarterback and came out with the injury and counter storms. The punter took over for a couple possessions, but Ham is back in. So that's good to see that he's uh, not knocked out for this game. There's nothing serious here. He completes a pass for seven yards. Agent here has to has to start to mix up the offense more and, and start calling more uh, pass plays here. And that pass was complete to Randy Fry. So this is going to be a run up the middle to Stewart. He drives a pile, and that's good enough for a first down. This will be first down and 10 for Adrian. So good start to the Adrian offense here, getting a first down right away. <coughs> So Decker and Mason were in on that last tackle. Here's Ham in the shotgun, three wide receivers. He's got an H back to his left and Stewart to his left. He hands it off to Stewart up the middle. He's got running room over the 45 and brought down. Close to a first down. 
and it looks like it's going to be marked as a first down they, as they will move the chains. First down at 10, Adrian. And a great job of blocking there with their interior offensive line. Uh, they're an elusive running back here, able to cut through the seams and get another first down here. So Adrian in the first, um, in the first few plays, already two first downs here and moving the chains. So we'll see what happens here. So here's Ham. He motions Nutter out to his left. Ham throws left side and complete that one to McGaw. So Adrian moving the chains in back-to-back -back plays here. It looks like they're starting to figure out their offense so far. So first down and 10. Here's Ham. He's got another to his left. Three wide receivers, one H back to his left. Takes a snap, fakes a handoff. He's going to throw left side. And that ball was on target but dropped right there by Randy Fry. He just dropped it, went right through his hands and along that Hope sideline. So second down and 10 here for Adrian. Some substitutions coming in for them. So Ham is going to be under center here. Stewart is the lone setback. They're going to hand it off to Stewart over the right side. He's going to try to get outside. Bounces it out. He's going to be stripped down, though, and taken down by Jacob Pardonet. And a great job by him in showing off his speed to get to that edge and shut that down. A good open field tackle. Stewart would have gotten away there. He's a very quick running back. Um, and he's getting more touches. He's getting more involved in this football game, so we'll see his impact as we go on. But a good tackle there. Um, setting up the defense for third and 10 here. So we'll see. Correction, third and 11. Yeah, we'll see a third down and 11 here for Adrian Hope. Their secondary backing off a little bit, understanding the down and distance. Ham takes a snap, drops back, throws, and a miscommunication. Looks like that was intended for Emmanuel Stewart, but he didn't even turn around, wasn't looking for it. Impossible miscommunication as the punt team will come on here for Adrian. Then we'll see Alex Van Vliet back deep once again to receive the punt. This is Connor Storms, the punter, who's kind of the star of this game so far, uh, coming in and having to play quarterback in an emergency situation. It just speaks to uh, the kind of athlete that he actually is, being able to throw the ball as well. He has two completions. So Storms, an end-over-end -end punt. Van Vliet's going to call for the fair catch, but it's going to bounce, and that's going to be downed at the 10 yard line and it'll be first down Hope College from there good punt by Storms able to bounce that one in and pin Hope deep so the Hope College defense there being able to keep them off the scoreboard once again but now it's going to be a challenge because they're starting with bad field position here at the 10 yard line um, so we'll see how the offense reacts See if they can get on the board again here, Clayton. Absolutely. We'll see Mason Opel. He's three for six on the day, 29 yards. Does have one touchdown rushing the ball. Play clock running down. It's under three seconds. Opel takes a snap, gets it off. That's running room over the right side for Brandon Campbell, but shut down quickly by that Adrian defense. That'll be a gain of about one, one and a half, and bring up second down in about nine. Under 11 minutes here remaining in this first half, the second quarter. Hope pinned back deep in their own territory. Oppel will be in the pistol set. Logan should eyes the H back to his left, Campbell behind him. Fakes the handoff. Oppel to throw. He's looking deep over the middle. Was looking for Boss, and that play broken up by Sean Starks. And a big play there by Sean Starks to break up that um, pass by Mason Oppel. I think he would have broke free if he would have caught that for sure. So a good play there, showing the effort and diving for the football. Um, 
and being able to break up that play. Yeah, and I like that play call there from Hope. They took a shot, and that was Boss just running that post route, and it was it was there, but Starks was able to come in and break it up. And like you said, a great play. Opel in the pistol once again, straight back to throw. It's a quarterback draw. He's got running room over the 15. He's going to be pushed out close to the 25-yard line. He's going to pick up the first down in a huge conversion. We're understanding that Mason Oppel can make plays with his feet, pick up for big first downs. We saw the touchdown here early in the second quarter. And that's another key for this Hope team. And if you have a quarterback with the ability to run, mm -hmm. um, that adds a whole dynamic, whole different dynamic to the offense. And as you see there, Oppel being able to use his speed and composure to get the first down. So here's Oppel in the pistol set, takes a snap, fakes a handoff, throws to his left. He's got Slank over on his left side. He makes a defender miss. He's over the 40 yard line and pushed out of bounds, but that's gonna be another Hope College first down. And that's just taking advantage of that coverage on the outside. Not press coverage, they're understanding. They can get some running room. If you make one guy miss, you can get into the open field and we saw it just there. And I'd like that they're calling more passing plays here. Uh, Slink there being showing his elusiveness, being able to break free and for and create another first down for Hope College here. So Hope moving the chains at the 40 yard line here. Oppel in the pistol once again. He's gonna hand it off this time. Lee over the left side and he's brought down for no gain. Stuffed by that defensive front for Adrian. They've shown some ability to stop the run here and that's why Hope has had to and go to the pass game to get some of their big plays, but they're going to continue to pound it nonetheless. I mean, this is this is what they do. Hope they're going to run Campbell. They're going to run Lee. They're going to take their chances with that, and why not? But it's always good when you when you also have the different dynamic to be able to throw the ball and move the chains that way as well. There's no question. Oppel fakes the handoff. He's going to throw outside. This is Slank. He's going to pick up about five yards. He's going to bring down a third down and five. That's an easy five yards. They're going to take that every time for me, any time that they're going to give him that. If you're Mason Oppel, Curtis Slank, that's a great read. No question about that. And we're, we'll see what the what the play call is here. I wouldn't be surprised if they call another passing play, Clayton. Yeah, so we do have a shotgun formation. Lee to his right. Oppel straight back to throw. Throws. He's got Veenstra for the first down. He's battling there. They're going to call him down at the 44. The first down and 10 for Hope College. And a good throw there by Mason Oppel. Moving the chains once again. And Hope College is looking good in this offensive drive. And getting a lot of the action through the air as we talked about. That could open up the run game later on. They're going to stick with that as the game goes along. But it's not a bad thing. We can get things going through the air as well. Oppel in the pistol with Lee behind him. Hands off to Lee. He's going to pick up about one. You got to give this Bulldog offense or defensive front, excuse me, credit for what they've been able to do. Make Hope throw. Um, it, it's worked out for Hope and through the air, especially on this drive. But they're forced to do that because of this bulldog front. They've done a great job throughout this game of uh, keeping uh, the the running from uh, their uh, running offense from going from getting past you know getting three or four yards, and that's been that's been a, con a constant thing throughout this game. So we'll see. Well, here's Oppel. He throws that one is complete to Veenstra. He gets a decent gain. He'll bring down a third and very manageable about third and two. And they're going to take what the defense has given them once again. And if you're moving the chains with with passing plays, why not continue to do con continue to call passing plays here if you're if you're Hope College? <laughs> so third down and two for Oppel in this Hope offense. He's going to be in the shotgun with Campbell to his left, Lee to his right. Three wide receivers. Adrian's got seven guys lined up in the box. Apple fakes the handoff to Lee. He's got running room. He's over the 25-20 into open field, and he's into the end zone for a Hope College touchdown. 
Mason Oppel with his second touchdown on the night. Both rushing. The quarterback showing off that he's got that dual threat speed. He broke a tackle and was able to get into the open for the touchdown. And a great play there by Mason Oppel. Having a heck of a game already. Putting Hope up 16 to nothing. Halfway through the second quarter here, Clay. Darren Ford to attempt the extra point. Make it 17 to nothing. The snap is botched and Ford's just going to go down with it. That was just a fumbled snap and a mistake there by David Boss. Just wasn't able to handle it in these slick conditions here. And we talked about it in the open for me that the conditions here with the, the constant rain and the wetness on the field are going to come into play at some point. And we saw it right there. And, and hopefully that doesn't come back to Bite Hope College. Every point here counts, especially the extra points. May not seem like a big deal, but every point counts. And uh, unable to get the extra point there, but still up 16 and nothing halfway through this second quarter. Yeah, and there's no question about that. I mean, this Adrian offense has the capability to score, like we talked about uh, early on. Uh, so we'll, you know, you don't expect them to be shut out here, but at the same time, you got to give a lot of credit to Hope and what they've done. Up 16 to nothing here. 6.15 remaining in this second quarter. Just over six minutes until the halftime break. Ford will come on here to kick it away deep. And in to receive, that's Foster Walker and Jacob Davis. That ball is muffed and picked up by Walker, and he is stick at the 20 yard line. So that's where they'll start their possession here. So once again, it's looking like it's gonna be another long drive for Adrian starting at the 20 yard line. Um, we'll see how the Hope College defense reacts here once again. They've done a great job throughout this game from keeping Adrian uh, from getting a big play, and, and, and that's very important, especially in games like today. The conditions aren't perfect. Yeah, there's uh, no question. Here's Ham. He motions Stewart out to his left in the slot. He's going to throw to Stewart, and it's going to be dropped, and Stewart was not ready for that pass to come. It's going to bring up second down at 10. And I think that's the second time this happened in this game where uh, Ham is looking for Stewart, and he... He's not even looking for the ball. Yeah. So you can see the inexperience there by Ham, but we'll see if he will be able to adjust as this game goes on. It's four wide receivers for Ham. He takes a snap in the shotgun, hands it off to Stewart up the middle over the right side. He's going to pick up a couple. That'll bring up third down. So third and seven here for Adrian. We'll see if they have Ham throwing here as you would expect they would. He's in the empty set. Five wide receivers. Trips to his left. Stewart's in the slot left. The running back. Ham takes a snap. He's going to throw. That one batted down at the line of scrimmage right there. And that was Tate Knapp who got his hands up. He saw the quarterback release. Batted it down. And that's going to bring up fourth down in the punt team. Connor Storms will come on here to boot it away. Van Vliet deep once again, and another stop for Hope College. And a big play right there once again. Three and out there. Up 16 and nothing. Let's see if Hope College can get it up even more on the scoreboard here. And it looks like they're going to start with pretty good field position. Ball goes right. So here's Storms on the punt. Van Vliet takes it, tried to make something happen over the right side. He does get it to midfield. It looks like we'll spot it at the 49 of Adrian, so it does take it into Adrian Bulldog territory. So this will be the hope possession another time with very good field position for me. And it just shows you when this defense can get three and outs and stop you 
uh, deep in Adrian's own territory. It makes that it that much easier for the offense. Yep, and it plays hand in hand, and we'll see that here all night long. So we do have Oppel in the shotgun with two running backs to either side of him, hands it off, a sweep left to Chris Lee, and that is snatched up, just sniffed out there by Jacob Davis. He came flying in there, played a great leverage there, and brings down Chris Davis Lee. Davis showing for a his loss. speed there and a great tackle uh, for a loss here. So it's going to be second down and 13 for Hoke. <coughs> Coach Sersman not happy about that. Down on the sidelines. Taking a look at him there. So Oppel will be in the shotgun. Straight back to throw. He's going to throw. That ball's complete. That one is going to bring down a third and manageable, and it's exactly what they wanted. And a good play call there by Andrew Hawk, and understanding that they're behind the chains a little bit, and we want to make it a third down and manageable. Possibly pick up a first down here, get themselves closer to field goal range uh, as they continue to drive. That's very important here to be able to get in field goal range um, to put us up three scores. Handoff right side to Campbell. Breaks a tackle, and he will get over the first down marker. He brings that one down to the 36-yard line, first down and 10, Hope. Campbell, a very experienced running back, has gotten a lot of carries in his career. Uh, getting a big first down there. Yeah, eight-yard rush there for the first down by Campbell. That was his seventh rush. He's got 22 yards here so far. It's really been Mason Oppel, the guy, the featured runner here, the quarterback, as we see him in the pistol. First down, hands it off to Campbell. He's up the middle, slices his way uh, for a gain of about two. Bring up second down and eight. As Campbell will come off there. And he hasn't had as much success as you'd expect from a guy like Brandon Campbell, a thousand yard rusher from a year ago. He's nearing that mark already so far this year. He's over 800 yards now in this one as he started out with 795 coming in. Uh, but here's Oppel. Takes a handoff, play action. He's going to throw. He finds a man. That slank, that one is corralled and caught inside the five at the two yard line. And a great adjustment right there from Curtis Slank. Oppel saw him open, threw it a little bit behind him, but Slank was able to recognize that, come back for it, and position himself away from the defender. That was Jacob Davis on the coverage, but a great job. Once and again, like Slink I said, there by showing, Slank. Showing his body control. Yeah. He's able to maintain the football. A great catch, putting Hope uh, at the one-yard line here. So they're going to go with this pistol set with two H-backs. Chris Lee is the running back behind Oppel. Design run for Oppel over the left side and dives into the end zone for another Hope College touchdown. Mason Oppel with his third rushing touchdown on the night. The quarterback showing off the legs there once again. He's the leading rusher on the night for both teams. And why not keep going with it for me when it's working? Absolutely, and that's his third rushing touchdown on the night. Mason Oppel, the native of Hudsonville, Michigan. A great athlete. Shows his composure there, his speed to be able to get in the, into the end zone and put Hope College up three scores now, 23 to nothing. It's actually 22 there as Ford missed that extra point wide right. And that's costly once again. And yeah, we saw last time in the extra point, like you mentioned, uh, every point counts. And last time it was a, a drop snap by Boss, and this time it's just a missed kick there. I'm not sure if the, you know, you, you wonder about the hold or um, the hold on that, but uh, Ford just kind of looked disappointed in himself on that one as he missed wide right. But that's the way the game's going. He'll have plenty of opportunities to right that wrong here. Ford getting ready to kick off here. Hope College up 22 or nothing. Two minutes left here in the first half of action. 
Yeah, and Adrian will try to get something going quickly, run their two-minute drill, and try to lead themselves down the field for at least some points. Ford's kick is deep, fielded at the one-yard line. This is Walker. He's over the 20-yard line. He finds running room up to the 30, and he'll be brought down there. A decent return there by Walker. As he found some running room, was able to find a cutback lane. Gets himself to the 30-yard line, and that's where Adrian will take over. And Adrian needs to get on the scoreboard here. They don't want to put up the goose egg at halftime. Um, and then, so we'll see w what they can do here. If they if they change the dynamic of the office, if they start calling more pass plays, um, they got to do something here, Clay, and they got to get on the scoreboard before halftime. They want to stay in this game. Yeah, and that's going to be their goal here is Hams in the shotgun, four wide receivers. Running back Nutter to his left. He's going to throw over the middle, complete. So right back to the line, here's Ham. Throws, that's over the middle, and that's that one's caught. And that's going to be McGaw. And they're over the 50-yard line, and quickly here, driving the football. Just under one minute and 40 seconds here remaining in this half. Ham will be in the empty set once again. Five wide receivers. Hope rushes three, that one caught. Over the middle, they're going to get right back up the line here. Another completion here from Ham. And that was Cleary. Once again, he's got two catches here in this drive. Ham takes a snap, throws over the middle. That one caught by McGaw over the 30 yard line, brought down at, a, at the 25 yard line. So, two first down catches here by McGaw already um, in this drive. And we'll and have a uh, timeout here. And Adrian coming first out. First timeout. Getting a few big plays here. Now inside the Hope College 30-yard line. Um, let's see if they can get on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's they're setting up here at least to get a field goal, but they're going to look for the end zone. When you're down 22 to nothing, seven points can be huge, especially going into this halftime. So one minute, six seconds here remaining in this first half. Ham leading his team down the field and trying to get some points on the board before halftime. Get them some momentum. Get them closer to getting back into this ball game here. Ham will be in the shotgun with Nutter to his right. Trips right. One wide receiver to the left. That's McGaw. Ham is going to hand it off to Nutter over the right side. That one not going anywhere. Nutter brought down for a loss. And, you know, it's a, it's a questionable play call there. Maybe they're just setting up for the field goal um, is one of the possibilities here. As we yeah, see I'm not Hamm. sure why they would go to a, a running play there. He's back to throw and throws long, and that one sails out of bounds. Especially after they Stops were getting the um, going there with the pass. Yeah, no question. They got them all the way down the field there, and they were driving, had the momentum, had Hope's defense on their heels, but they went to the run, and that pass incomplete. It stops the clock here with 37 seconds remaining. So we'll see what they do here. Trips to his right, hand in the shotgun with Nutter, the running back, to his right. McGaws, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Ham takes a snap. He's rolling to his right, finds a man, hit hard. That one's completed, though. Mason Decker brought him down. We'll have another timeout here. Timeout. And a big hit there by Mason Decker. So this will be fourth down. You assume right now. You get on the board and take the field goal, but we'll see if they go for it. Yeah, it's a tough call because in one respect, um, you know, three points isn't going to do too much for you. But at the same time, you, you do want to get on the board, like you said. And maybe they'll try to 
somehow get this first down and just pick up those two yards and call timeout and maybe take a few shots at the end zone before doing that. But at the same time, you risk the chance of not even getting on the board here before <laughs> the end of this first half. And we'll see how much trust they have in their kicking game. And they're going to keep their offense on the field here as they trot out. Fourth down and two. 29 second, seconds remain. And you'd assume they're going to try to draw Hope off sides here with a hard count. So we'll see what happens here. Ham is in the shotgun. He does try a hard count. And nobody moving there for Hope. He, he's going to take the snap. Hands it off to Stewart right up the middle. He's going to be close. Looks like he's short of the marker. And it's going to be a turnover on downs. It's going to be first down for Hope College as they take over. And the big play there by the Hope College offensive line preventing Adrian from getting the two yards there and, and obtaining the first down. Um, and it looks like they are going to lay, lay the goose egg there um, at yeah, the first half. So and Talk about recovering from a, from a drive where Adrian was able to come out very quickly through the passing game, but Hope was able to shut that down, and they've done a good job at that all year long. And just near the red zone uh, when the back's against the wall, a big play there. And, and Mason Oppa will just take a knee and take this one into halftime here. So Hope is up 22 to nothing, and the story of the game is Mason Oppel rushing the football with three touchdowns as he leads his team. 22 nothing, Hope over Adrian at half. Stick with us for just minutes away from second half action here from Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. Remember to bring the GPS? Nope. Oh. Well, you have an app on your phone to tell us how to get where we're going? I do not. Really? So you have an actual map, like the kind that are hard to fold? Uh-uh. You just know where you're going? No idea. Don't be this guy when it comes to financial planning. LVZ Advisors. We'll help get you there. Hey, we're all a little lost. Do uh, you know where the lake is?
Welcome back here to Ray and Sue Smith Stadium here at Hope College. I'm Clayton Safey alongside Fermin Duran. We're ready for some second half of action here in just a couple minutes. 22 to nothing is the Hope lead over Adrian at halftime here. Homecoming at Hope College. A lot going around going on, on campus here um, this weekend, and it's uh, definitely been a good start for this Hope College football team uh, as they're playing in their homecoming game up with a big lead at half. And the story has been Mason Oppel, the quarterback, the dual threat. He's made some great passes, led his team on some touchdown drives, but has capped three of those off with rushing touchdowns of his own. And for me, just talk about how important that has been for this Hope team so far. Oh, and I mentioned it a couple times already in the broadcast. He's been, he's added a whole different dynamic to the offense, and I cannot stress that enough. Uh, when the going, when the when the going gets tough, he he keeps his composure and he's able to scramble and somehow uh, pick up first downs. He's got a knack for doing that, and he played great in the first half. Three rushing touchdowns. Let's see if he can throw for a couple. Um, but he's played a great game. Um, and like you said earlier, it does remind us of, of a Tim Tebow-like player for yeah. uh, Hope A Tim College. Tebow type. I mean, you a take Tim a Tebow type. You take a look at a guy like that. And the same physique yep. and uh, and a great work ethic, I'm sure. But played a heck of a first half. And if you can put it together um, and play the same way that he did in the first half, he could have a very, very special game here um, as a Hope College quarterback. Um so we'll see. What do you think, Clayton? Well, yeah, I mean, Mason Oppel has been has been huge for this Hope team so far. Also, Hunter Ham on the other side for Adrian has been able to complete some passes, especially in that last drive. He let his team down. Uh, they ended up stalling out, and Hope came coming up with a big turnover on downs to, uh, to end that first half before they took the knee and ran out the clock. But Hunter Ham will look for him in the second half as the quarterback coming from behind, understanding that he's got to make some throws here in this second half to put his team back in position to possibly get back in this game and give themselves a chance. So it's going to be big for him. Also, Emmanuel Stewart, the running back, uh, we've only seen nine We've seen nine carries out of him for only 20 yards, uh, averaging just 2.2 yards a carry. So um, not a lot from him, and you got to give a lot of credit to that, to this Hope defensive front that has been very, very steady up front and not allowing them to get their running game going. So we're about ready. Here, go ahead. And hope just ha all they have to do is put two halves together here, and uh, comfortably win this football game. Not put themselves under positions where um, they could give Adrian a chance to come back in this game. And uh, I think uh, getting a touchdown here to start this uh, offensive drive would do a lot for that. Yeah, the rain continues to come down here as we're ready to kick off this second half. Hope and Adrian hope with that 22 to nothing lead. This is Joshua Sagayo. Kicks off little pooch kick over to the left side, and it'll be knee, kneeled down here at the 40-yard line. And Hope will start off with good field position, and that's been a trend in this game here so far for me. And I mean, we've seen Hope start out with short fields. Interesting choice there by Adrian. Yeah, they're coming out trying to surprise Hope here to start the half. Hope with another short field here, starting from their own 39. Here comes Mason Oppel, the star of that first half. Three touchdowns rushing. And we'll see what Hope wants to come out with here. Is there in the pistol? That's a handoff over the left side to Campbell. It breaks one tackle, and he's just going to run out of bounds, but he's going to get a decent gain there. And that just shows the power of Brandon Campbell. He gets outside, but he's also able to make guys miss. He'll run you over sometimes. That time there, he just breaks... Uh, an arm tackle and gets outside and for a gain of about six or seven. And a good play there <coughs> by Brandon Campbell in his first touch here in the second half, uh, showing that he's been there, showing that he's um, that he has some experience there. A good run there to the left side, and we'll see if he can continue to impact this game. Apple hands it off. This is Campbell once again. That time up the middle looks like he'll gain about one. This will bring down third down and three. You have a quite a pile down there and possibly an injured player. Everyone's going to get up, though, and it'll be a third down. About two and a half here for Hope. Campbell will come off. Chris Lee will be the running back. A 
Lee, the second back in that one-two punch that we've seen all season long since Lee came back from injury uh, just a few weeks ago. That's a fake handoff there. He's going to keep it and be stuffed in the backfield. That time, Adrian was ready for it. A lot of design runs here tonight for Mason Oppel, but that time, Adrian saw that one coming and was able to get him in the backfield for a loss, bringing up a fourth down. And a good defensive stand there by Adrian, getting the ball back right away to start the second half. <coughs> um, we'll see if they can put some points on the board, though, on offense. So that last tackle made by Damon Fuller for the Bulldogs. Here comes Darren Ford on to punt. That's a very good kick. That one is going to bounce, and it's going to be fielded on the bounce. Adrian will take over at their own 16-yard line here, first down and 10 to start off their first drive of this second half. After Hope was shut down offensively by this Adrian defense, we do have a flag down on the field. So a flag on the play that was it a late hit, Cody? Not exactly sure what the call was there, but it will bring Adrian. College, 10 yard penalty, Adrian first down. So they, they call a block in the back, and he said on Hope College, which. That is very unusual just because Hope was the kicking team. Coach Sturzman's got his, he threw his hands up like, I mean, he didn't understand the call at all. He's yeah, blocking the back. And Nonetheless, Ham is going to fake the ha handoff and throw to his right. That's Stewart over the right side. He's going to gain about nine yards. He's going to bring down second down and very short, and they're starting out with that rhythm there. And, you know, we talked about it before this half Getting started. Getting Stewart involved is very important for the Adrian offense here. Yeah, there's no question it. Ham, Ham being able to make passes and, and complete them uh, is going to be huge for them in the second half as well. This one is to Nutter over the left side, handoff, and he will get a first down and more. A couple extra yards, and he churns his way down to the 39 yard line. First down and 10 for Adrian. That'll move the chains. Ham in the shotgun. He's got Stewart to his left. He's going to motion him out. Slot left. Empty set. Takes a snap. Throws to his right. That's complete. And that's McGaw. He's going to step out of bounds just at the 45-yard line. And a good gain there on first down. A gain of six. And that'll bring up second down and four. Nadine looks to be in a, in a little bit better of a rhythm here. If you're Hope College, you hate to get that... Um, penalty earlier this drive and give them a better field position um, if you're a football team you can't shoot yourself in the foot you can't rack up these penalties and obviously that was the first one in this game but you got to be careful so here's ham he's going to throw to his left he's got McGaw again he weaves his way and falls down for a first down that's into hope territory that'll move the chains once again this ball will be spotted at the 46 yard line and they're into enemy territory here driving and Hunter Ham is going to be key in the second half if his team's going to get back in the ball game. He's got to complete throws. McGaw's been the leading receiver uh, for this Bulldog team, and so we'll keep an eye on him as well. And he's got six receptions for 68 yards here. Of course, had that 33-yarder early on. This one's over the middle. That was intended for McGaw, and that was batted at the line, got a finger on it. And McGaw not able to handle it. We've seen a couple times here tonight as Hope defense being able to get a finger on the ball. They batted one down earlier. This defensive front of Hope is good, good against the run, steady, but also able to pass rush, get their hands up, and get deflections. So here's Nutter. He motions to his left. Here's a throw. McG McGaw catches it over to his right, close to the first down marker. It's going to be third and short. 
But another example. And McGaugh continues to get the ball. Yeah. They've been calling his number all game. Uh, he's had a really good game so far. Proving to be probably the best receiver for the Adrian team. So here's going to be an eye formation. With Very a rare, manageable Yeah, here. rare play under center here for Ham. He's got Nutter. He's the set back. Hands it off over the right side. First down for Adrian. He'll get that, and it'll be spotted at the 35-yard line. So Nutter's kind of that guy that they're going to bring in. He's able to get the tough yards as opposed to Stewart, who's going to play some slot. He's also going to get some carries in the backfield and try to break some of those bigger runs outside. So here's Ham. He's in the shotgun with five wide receivers, empty set. Takes the high snap. Looks to his right, and he is blasted from behind right there by Griffin Weigel, who didn't even wrap him up, just nailed him and went down immediately, did Ham, and that is a huge play. And a great call by Coach Terzman to bring in an extra defensive line, lineman there. Uh, Hope College does get the sack, and that's a big play. Um, kind of putting a stop to this uh, rhythm here from Adrian. Yeah, that was momentum stopping. A huge hit there. Crowd went crazy at that. Here's Ham on second down and 17. He's going to throw. That ball is caught over the 35-yard line and inside. They're going to get back towards the original line of scrimmage. Kyle Crum gets the tackle there, and Kyle Crum, one of these guys that is really a playmaker for this Hope team. Didn't get much playing time early on, but he's come on and, um, you know, talking to some guys on the team. He's the scariest corner to go against in practice, and you see it right there getting the tackle. Very physical player, loves getting big hits. You saw a great tackle right there. So third down and eight. Ham is pressured again once again by Weigel, and his throw is going to fall incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down, and Hope is bringing that pressure, making Ham uncomfortable after he made some good rhythm throws early on in the drive. And we'll see what Adrian wants to do here. They're going to keep their offense on the field, at least for the moment. So this is a big play. Yeah, this is a big play for them. If they pick it up, they'll continue their drive. If not, Hope will take over on downs. Here's Ham. He's got trips to his left. Stewart is the running back to his left in the shotgun. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw, looking left. Steps up and throws towards the end zone. That ball's going to be picked off right there by Mason Rosado on fourth down. He should have just batted it down, but he picks it up, and we'll see if they rule that a touchback or if they're going to rule that at the one-yard line. It looked like. He's originally. Looks yeah, like he's I mean, he did catch it outside of the end zone. Yeah. So we'll see what. Should that ball, that it ball it's going to be a touchback. And that'll be spotted at the 20 yard line. And that's where Hope will take over here to start uh, their second drive of this second half. So Mason Rosado with the interception, the first turnover on this ball game here. Of this second half. Here's Oppel. He's going to pitch it left to Campbell on the outside. He's got a block. He's going to gain about four yards. To bring up in a, a second down at about six. There is a flag on the play. If there will be a penalty flag, and we'll see what that is. Holding, 77 of the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down. That's going to be a holding there. Holding right there will drive the flying best back. They get Timothy Ivory. So this will be a first down and 20 for Hope College. And another penalty there. Gonna make it tough to get this first down. So here's Oppel, throws out to his left. He's got Veenstra 
That's going to com be complete, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds there. And so they'll get it, make up a chunk back there, but not even back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and 14 here. And I've been really impressed with what Mason Opel's been able to do with his arm uh, in addition to running the ball, but in this wet conditions. There's a quarterback draw here for Oppel. Right up the middle, he gets over the 25 yard line and picks up another good chunk there. And it'll be third down and manageable for this Hope team. And we'll see what Andrew Hawk and the offensive coordinator goes with here is we have a third down and four. And a good decision there by Oppel to keep it. <clears throat> and get some good yardage here. So Oppel in the pistol set. He's got Campbell behind him, takes the snap. It's going to be a quarterback draw once again. He is going to reach out and dive for that first down marker, and they're going to spot him. Looks like he got that first down, and he did. A great effort play by Mason Oppel to extend and get the first down and, and move the chains. The and you can't say enough about um, his awareness of the game, understanding that moving the chains is the most important thing, and he's done that with his arm today. He's done it with his legs. I'm very impressed by his game so far today. Chris Lee over the right side is going to be brought down for three yard gain. We'll bring up second down and seven. Pistol set once again for Oppel. He's going to hand it off to Lee over the left side this time. He'll gain three yards. Third down and short upcoming here. They're going to continue to pound the ball and try to take up some possession here, but their most important thing right now is to get this first down here on third and three. It'll be a shotgun set for Alpa. Lees to his right, two wide receivers to his left, tight end left, and one wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. Alpa's gonna take a design run over the right side. He's gonna get the first down over the 40 yard line. And another great job by Mason Apple to just get enough for that first down and move the chains, keep this offense on the field, and keep the Adrian defense on the field. And Apple doing a great job already this second half of running the football, um, <clears throat> just showing great poise at the quarterback position, um, doing it both with his feet and with his arm. So he's made great impact already in this game. And here he is on the shotgun. He's gonna throw, he's pressured. Ball comes out, he gets it back though, fortunately for him. He will lose a good deal of yardage though. That ball is gonna be at the 31. It's gonna bring out up a long second down. Second and 20. Opple fortunate in these wet conditions to be able to get a good kind of a candy hop, a baseball term there from Ian of hit the ground, came right back up to him and he was able to snatch it up. And Crisis averted there for Mason Oppel. He's going to be straight back to throw. It's going to be a screen play to Brandon Campbell. He dropped it but was lit up after the play by Jordan Freemark. And I thought that was surely a, a late hit there on Freemark. As Campbell didn't even have the ball for a good second or two. Going to bring up third down and 20. For me, what do you do on third down and 20? I uh, I run the football here. I, keep, I, please, I, I mean, I play it safe. I don't. We're already we're up 22 points here. <clears throat> no need to call for a passing play here and risk getting an interception. That's going to be an awful run. He's going to gain one on that. 
possibly a quarterback draw. I'm not sure if that was designed or not, but there was pressure coming in from all angles from that Adrian defense. And their defensive front has done a good job all night long. And if you're Hope College, you'd rather have that than uh, running the risk of throwing an interception and turning the ball over. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this will bring on Darren Ford. This is going to be a line drive, end over end kick, and he's going to get a fortunate bounce for him. That ball is going to be fielded at the 15 yard line right there, and Darren Ford able to pin them back and get a very good punt. That was fielded by Jacob Davis at the 15, but Adrian with another long field. And for me, you talked about it a lot in that first half is Hope is winning this field position battle here tonight. It's, it's rainy. Um, long drives are going to be hard to score on, and especially for Adrian, a team that's been struggling offensively here tonight against his Hope defense. And that's happened throughout this football game. <clears throat> Adrian hasn't had good field position at all to start any of their drives. Um, and here we go. With their own 15. So here's Ham in the shotgun. This is Stewart to his right, the running back. Two wide receivers to his left. H back to his left, one wide receiver to his right. Hand off to Stewart, cut back over the right side. He's going to gain a few. A good run by Emmanuel Stewart. It'll be second down and five. It'll be right up to the line. They have a sense of urgency here. They just want to get on the board. Here's we're nearing the end of the third quarter. This is Ham. Hands off to Stewart over the right side. This time stuffed. He's going to gain a couple. But nothing more, and Hope is able to crash in on that and make a big play. It's going to bring down third down, and this Hope defense has been great on third down this so far. This is a big play here for Adrian. <clears throat> if they're unable to get the first down here, that'd be another three and out. And that last tackle made by Mason Decker and Ian Gorgensen. And a lot of help from their teammates on this Hope defense. So third down and four. Here's Ham. Four wide receivers. He's going to throw out to his right. Almost picked off by Mason Rosado, who jumped that route. A great diving effort there by Mason Rosado. Already with an interception this game. And uh, the Hope College secondary also looking good. So it will be fourth down, and we will see Connor Storms on here. Of course, we talked about it in the first half, but he came in and played a little quarterback, completed two passes. He's two for two on the night uh, when Ham went down for a little bit and then came back in a couple position, possessions later. But give credit to Storms for stepping in when he was needed. Here's the punt. Spiral punt. It's backing Van Vliet up. That bounces at the 26. Van Vliet's going to take it. He's over the 25, over the 30, 35, weaving his way to the 37 yard line and he's brought down there but a good return by Alex Van Vliet after a very good kick from Connor Storms. He out kicked his coverage right there. Really did and that's a good return. And uh, once again, good field position to start this drive for Hope College. Yeah, not bad at all. And that goes a long ways here as they try to put Adrian away here as we approach the end of the third quarter. And do you expect Hope to keep it a lot on the ground here for the rest of the game? Absolutely. Uh, so we'll see what they do here with Oppel in the pistol set, Campbell behind him. Hand off to Campbell over the left side, finds a cutback lane. He busts through a couple of tacklers and gets a gain of about six. And Brandon Campbell showing off that power and Hope trying to wear down this Adrian defense. Hasn't been much running room for Campbell so far tonight. But compared to what he's accustomed to, he does have 38 yards on 11 carries. But he's he's averaging 7.5 yards per carry on the season. So three and a half per carry here tonight. Not quite what he's used to. Give Adrian defense a lot of credit for that. Here's Apple in the pistol. He's looking to throw. He's going to throw. That was intended for Veenstra, but sails high out of bounds. It's going to bring up third down so in a third and four situation what kind of play do you expect here Clayton 
you know, Hope really has the entire playbook at their disposal at this point. I mean, they're able to get four yards on the ground. We've seen that all night. Possibly a design run for Oppel, who's good at, at moving the chains. They also can pass it here and get one of those short routes that have been working all night as well. They're going to throw. Oppel, pump fakes. He's going to throw deep now. He's got Veenstra open, and that ball was just dropped. A little bit underthrown where Veenstra had to adjust and come back to it, but he could have caught that one. In, in a good play call there, trying to catch um, <clears throat> the agent secondary slip in there. Unable to do so, though. That one, a good job by... And a good throw by Mason Oppel as good well. Good job by Villa Lobos to break that one up for Adrian and force fourth down here for Hope as Darren Ford comes on to kick. And we will see Jacob Davis, uh, of course, deep to receive for Adrian. End over end kick from Ford. And that one rolling towards the end zone. And for some reason, Jacob Davis picked it up at the one-yard line and fell on it instead of letting it roll into the end zone, which it looked like he was about to do. And Hope says, thank you for doing our job for us, Jacob yeah. Davis. Wow. Interesting decision there by Davis. I don't, put that at the why, two. I don't know why he didn't just let that ball go into the end zone. Yeah. It looked like it was headed that way. I and mean, that is, that from is up a, here, we didn't know the spin on the ball. Maybe... Well, but I mean, either way, there's no point in that for there, him. There's still no point in picking Absolutely that ball Absolutely no point of it, yep, at the two-yard line. So, And another long field. They're going to have to drive 98 yards here if they want to score a touchdown. And they run a risk of giving up a safety here with the job that the Hope defensive yep, line has been doing They're going to bring game. in their power package. Ham is under center. He's got an eye formation. Nutter is a deep setback. He's going to throw. Pump fakes looking deep out of his own end zone. Throws and overthrows his intended receiver, McGaw. That's Jerron McGaw. And coverage there by Mason Rosado. And it's going to bring second down and 10. Still from the two-yard line. Adrian deep in their own territory. And like you said, for me, they run the risk of, of getting a safety. And throwing there is a very risky decision. At the same time, they went for the home run ball. Didn't pay off. But I don't mind that play call. I don't either. I mean, at this point, they're... So desperate to get on the scoreboard. Down 22 points, approaching the end here of the third quarter. Um, let's see what they do here. Yep, so Ham's going to be in the shotgun, standing his own end zone, fakes the snap, or fakes the handoff, throws a good throw right there, intended for Randy Fry, who just dropped it along that Adrian sideline. Would have been good enough for the first down. So it's going to bring third down. And at this point of the game, you can't afford to drop the football there if you're Adrian. And after two throws, one on first and one on second down, you again, expect them to go to the air once again. That, that football in a place where you, to give his receiver a chance to catch the ball. Ham will take it and just hand it off to Nutter. He's going to get no gain. Questionable call there you'd wonder why on first and second they'd go through the air and, and then, then not, then on not third trust down yeah. yeah and then third down run the football they certainly weren't afraid of throwing out of their own end zone there and risking the safety but uh, they just go with a conservative run there as they find themselves still down 22 to nothing and they got their punter connor storms standing at the back of their own end zone van vliet before hope is standing at his own 49 yard line He's creeping up now. Storms, spiral, punt. Van Vliet, muffed it for a second but picks it up. He's running over the right side. Stiff arms a man to the ground. Now he's going to go backwards and he's drugged down at that Hope sideline. They will start over once again in Adrian territory as it, the ball's at the 47-yard line of the Bulldogs, and Hope will start there first down and 10. This Hope offense with just 40 seconds remaining in this third quarter. So we'll head into the final quarter. And we expect to see Hope continue to run the football, keep things on the ground, keep the clock moving here as we approach the fourth quarter. Oppa will be in the pistol set with Campbell behind him. 
Takes a handoff, now he's gonna run himself. It's gonna be no gain there. So bring up second down and 10 once again. This could be taken into the fourth quarter. We'll see what Hope wants to do if they do want to take it in. And it looks like they will. So we'll head to the fourth quarter here for me. Heck of a game so far by the Adrian defensive line, but not enough so far in this game. Yeah, they've really done a good job um, corralling Lee and Campbell in the running game, but they just haven't had enough to stop Mason Oppel, the quarterback, from taking it himself. He's just done enough to get crucial first downs for this team. Mason Oppel with 15 rushes for 69 yards and three touchdowns. 36-yarder was his longest carry. Brandon Campbell, 11 rushes for 38 yards. Chris Lee, seven rushes for six yards. On the other side, Running the football, Emmanuel Stewart does have 11 attempts for 27 yards. And David Nutter with eight rushes for 16 yards. So not much through the run game for Adrian. One of the players of the game for Adrian so far has been Jerron McGaw, who's got seven receptions for 76 yards. He's been the favorite receiver for Hunter Ham here tonight. He's been one of those steady guys, but Hunter Ham has had to deal with some drops from some of his receivers and hasn't been easy for him getting, getting pressured by this Hope defense as well, which is pitching a shutout right now. So Clayton Safey alongside Fermin Duran, bringing you fourth quarter action here from Ray and Sue Smith Stadium here at Hope College. Rain is still falling. Oppo will be in the shotgun. Three step drop, he's gonna throw over the middle. That ball was on target to Ryan Veenstra, but dropped in a good pass break up there by Sean Starks. So it'll be third down and 11 here for Hope. You wonder if they're gonna, <coughs> obviously a passing situation here. You wonder if they elect to run and try to mix things up here. Apple drops back. He's just going to run it himself. Oh, but he is sacked. Jacob Davis with the sack there on Mason Apple. It'll bring out the punt team for Hope and a very good stand for Adrian's defense here to start the fourth quarter. So Darren Ford will come out to punt, and this will be Jacob Davis back deep to receive once again. Ford has had some very good punts here so far. This is his sixth punt. And over end, fair catch is called for in that time. Able to uh, catch it, not inside his own five, not at the two yard line, but um, a little bit better there and a good fair catch by Davis who made the mistake on the last punt return uh, to down it at his own two. And the rational call there by Davis to take the <coughs> fair catch. As Adrian once again bringing out their troops trying to get in the scoreboard here to start the fourth quarter. So we'll see the Wildcat here. As Stewart's gonna take the snap, fakes the handoff. He's gonna run over the left side. He's got running room outside and falls down at the 20 yard line. But they're coming out with something different here for Mean. What do you what do you think they're thinking here on the Wildcat? Just trying to get a spark for this offense? And yeah, trying to get Stewart um, <coughs> more, uh, more uh, space there to run. A good play call there. Uh, they did get some chunk of yard, yardage right there. So they're going to stay in this set. Stewart's going to take it. He's going to run right up the middle over the. He gets the first down. Yeah, he gets the first down yardage. Looks like he's at the 25 yard line. That'll move the chains for an Adrian Bulldog first down. They're going to stick with this here. Stewart running the show, calling the offensive line where the block. Stewart has thrown a 
So they're going to stick to the wildcat here. Stewart's going to take it. Design run over the right side. You gain a couple before being pushed back by that Hope defense. And for me, you got to wonder why when Hunter Ham went down early on in the game, they didn't go to the Wildcat for a few plays. Uh, they elected to go with Connor Storms, the punter, as we see Ham come back in. You wonder if that would have made an impact um, in the game earlier. But you can't do anything about it now. If you're Asian, you want to get on the scoreboard here uh, early in the fourth quarter because there's not enough time down 22 points. So here's Ham back in. He's going to throw. Throws over the middle to McGaw. That's complete. Yeah, and good enough for first down yardage. And McGaw continues to make an impact in this game. He already had seven catches for 76 yards. So after that play, I'm sure he's above 80. Yeah, he's got eight receptions now for 86 yards. So he has definitely made an impact. Here comes Ham to throw way downfield, and that one is intercepted by Mason Rosado. Another pick for Rosado, his second interception of tonight's game. His hope will have it at their own 28-yard line, taking over in a big turnover, possibly to uh, be on the way to putting this away here for a hope victory as they lead 22 to nothing. And if Hope is able to run the football here and move the chains a, a few times, uh, there should be no, go no looking back here. So we'll see Mason Oppel in the pistol set. Hands off to Chris Lee over the right side. Not much running room, he'll pick up a gain of two to bring up second down and eight. But you expect Hope to continue to run the football, continue to keep the clock ticking and run it down here as they trying to get themselves a victory here on their homecoming game. Shotgun set now. Or Oppel leads to his left, the running back. Three-step drop. Oppel's going to throw over the middle. That one bobbled and dropped by Marie Hardy. So Villa Lobos broke that up, and Hardy not able to hang on to it. So third down and eight to go here. If you're Hope College, you, you really need to get this first down in order to put yourself in a great spot to win this football game. Absolutely. Oppel looking to do just that. He drops back. Trying to, they were trying to set up a screen pass there over on the right side to Lee and Oppel was pressured and there was a great job of Adrian understanding that that was a screen flowing over to the left side. Um, and they, Oppel just throws it into the ground, a smart move by him. He'll bring up fourth down. And they're possibly going to look at, they're going to call this intentional grounding here on Mason Oppel, even though he did have uh, what appeared to me. He did have Lee a in the area, yeah. yeah. There's no penalty for intentional grounding the ball because eight was in the vicinity. Lost it down. Yep, so they're going to confirm what we thought is that Lee was in the area. So no penalty flag there for intentional grounding, and Darren Ford will. That was the right call. Yep, Ford will be punting this one away for Hope College. Davis is deep to receive. Ford pressured, almost blocked. He gets off a pretty good punt. That one's going to roll inside the 25, close to the 20. It's going to be picked up at the 21-yard line. Another good punt from Darren Ford, and the special teams for Hope has kept themselves in good field position and kept Adrian in bad field position all Throughout night this long. Game, yeah. yeah, and they've had to, uh, if they wanted any chance at scoring tonight, they've had to go a long ways, and especially with these wet conditions and the rainy conditions, it's not an easy thing to do on a, on a night like this. Right. So not ideal to go three and out there for Hope College. But let's see if the defense can... 
keep them out of the scoreboard once again. So here's Stewart in the Wildcat formation. He's going to run to his right. A great job by Hope's defense sniffing that out and flowing over to the edge. And Stewart not able to get around the corner like he was hoping. And it's interesting that they just now, uh, Adrian just now goes to the Wildcat. And now they're relying on the run game to, to pick up yards when you know the clock is starting to run out on them. Uh, and you'd assume they want to go to the air as Hunter Ham comes back in here to play quarterback. And maybe that's a philosophy here. And we saw towards the end of that first half, um, when they're able to get in that rhythm and complete a couple passes in a row, they, they, they can be very effective in the air. So Ham throws over the middle, and that ball was a little low and incomplete dropped. That was Joe Cleary. It was his intended receiver. He could have hung on to it, but just couldn't quite do it. A low throw there. <laughs> Third down and seven. So Ham will be in the empty set. Three wide receivers to his left, two to his right. Third down and seven. Drops back, quickly throws to his right, and he got blasted. Just had to get rid of it there. He was intending that to go to McGaw. But when you have pressure like that from this Hope defense, not an easy thing to complete a pass and a great job by Coach Sturzma and Coach Ricketts, the defensive coordinator, to dial up that blitz. And a great call there now. Adrian forced to punt the football here at their own 20 yard line. So this is Storm standing at his own 10 yard line ball. Spotted at the 25. Storms with a spiral punt. Van Vliet fields it at his own 35. Bobbled it, but he's going to keep possession of it, and he's going to return it for just one yard as he was brought down there by James Mails. So hope a decent field position here. And let's see if they're, they're finally able to move the chains here. Ten thirty-three remaining here in the fourth quarter. Hope on top, twenty-two to nothing. Apple is in the pistol. He's going to hand off left side to Campbell, and that one was not going anywhere. Chris Adams came flying in to make the tackle in the backfield for a loss of about four. It's going to bring down second down and fourteen. But give Adams a lot of credit for coming downhill, pinning his ears back, and making that play. Good play there by Chris Adams. It's important for uh, Agent here to force Hope to go three and out once again if they want to give themselves a shot to try and get back in this football game. Alpo fakes the handoff, takes it himself. He's going to get six yards and bring up third down and eight. So Apple once again being able to pick up some yards with his feet on a design run. Hope taking their time here on offense, letting the play clock run down. It's under 20 seconds now as they just start to get up to the line of scrimmage. Apple's in the shotgun with Chris Lee to his right. Apple drops back. He's going to throw. Finds his man Lee over the right side. He's going to get the first down yardage and run out of bounds, and that will move the chains, and that is huge for the That's a big first down there for Hope College. <coughs> good play call. A good throw there by Mason Oppel to put that right there. And, and quick throws like that have worked all night long for this Hope team. Chris Lee just coming out of the backfield on that right side. And that's going to keep the clock running. Apple hands it off to Lee, up the middle. He's going to spin down for a gain of a few. Lee is doing a really great job spreading things out and doing quick as well. And for doing a good 
job of targeting Bulldogs who are out of position and making mistakes. If a defensive back drops the ball a little bit on some coverage, Mason Opal sees that and he puts the ball right there on the money. It's just been a really tough day for the Bulldogs. That clock to continues to tick here as Hope well taking their time getting the call in and getting up to the line of scrimmage, of course, once again. Opel's going to be in the pistol. Lee's behind him once again. Logan Shadaya, the H back in motion. Fakes the handoff, does Opel, and he's stripped down by Damon Fuller, who came flying in. That's going to be a loss there as Opel faked the handoff, took it himself, but had nowhere to go. And a good play there. But with seven. About seven minutes to go here. You wonder if that's too late for Adrian. Down three scores. You wonder if Hope's going to continue to keep it on the ground here or if they're just going to get that first down. Possibly through the air. Apple takes a snap. He will throw. Rolls out to his right. He's pressured and he's just going to throw it away down that right sideline. We do have a penalty flag down though at the 32-yard line, closer to the hope side and not, not the side of the field where the ball was thrown. So we'll see what the call is coming up here. On the play, helmet of number 62 of Adrian came off and he participated. By rule, illegal participation, 15 yards against Adrian, first down. So that is big for Hope, so looks like number 62, Austin Kowalski, Kowalsh, had his helmet off, taken off the play before. He did not come out of the game. And that's going to be a 15-yard penalty for illegal participation. And that will move the chains for Hope as it would have been fourth. In an illegal participation call, not sure when the last time I heard that penalty call. Yeah, and you'd have to blame the Adrian coaching staff for that, not taking him off the field after his helmet came off. It's just a mistake that didn't need to be made. Not quite, quite the mistake Adrian wanted if, if they want to continue, uh, if they want to get the ball back and, and continue to give a shot at this Hope defense to possibly score. Oppa will take it now. He's going to run the option, takes it himself. He's going to get a couple of yards. He's brought down at the 35 yard line. And Oppa, a big body there, being able to get a couple extra yards. Second and eight here. Would have gone to Campbell. Fuller read it perfectly. Made a nice tackle on Opal. He's made a couple good plays by himself on this drive. And now apparently an injured Hope College player who's talking about So Hope player is down injured. And Finally they call it. Hope will just call a timeout. Instead, Peter Sturzma, head coach, uh, calls timeout, and the team will come on over. But it looked like Vanderveen went down. He was on a knee, but the refs just didn't notice him there, and they didn't stop the clock or blow the whistle. So he literally took a seat there. He sat down. Hope calls a timeout here. 6.25 to play. You wonder if it's too late for Adrian. Well, that last penalty didn't help them either to move the chains for Hope and keep this offense on the field with the clock ticking. But even if Adrian was able to get the ball back, we have not seen enough out of their offense to, to think that they would have uh, come down and scored three straight times with uh, probably a couple onside kicks involved. I mean, that would be the only chance uh, in case, uh, or, uh, you know, unless something crazy happens here, it doesn't seem like Adrian will be able to... Uh, come out of here with a victory and it looks like Hope will protect their home field here and get the win here with 625 remaining. So 
the Hope offense will come back out after the timeout. Oppo will be in the pistol set. Campbell behind him. Chris Kelly's the H-back to his left. Fakes a handoff. Oppo's going to throw. He's going to roll now to his left. Throws. That was intended for Chris Kelly and incomplete. Adams on the coverage. And Chris Kelly last week had his first career touchdown on a pass from Mason Oppel. He's the H-back, and they finally used him in that capacity, catching a pass. Uh, so that was big for him. And Chris Kelly, a great blocker as one of the H-backs, splits time with Logan Shadaya at that position. And they rewarded the, the big fellow there getting a touchdown last week. So shotgun set here for Oppel. He's dropping back. Pressured again. He's going to throw up. He's going to run off over the left side. Excuse me. And brought down. It's going to bring up fourth down. McPhee on the tackle. And we, as we see Damon Fuller down injured on the field. Looks to be in distress. And the medical staff will come out and I'll see what's going on with him. As this will be fourth down upcoming here for Hope. And you hate to see injuries, obviously, um, especially late in games. We'll hope he's okay. So six minutes remaining here in this fourth quarter. As we'll see Fuller. Walk off the field on his own, kind of limping a little bit, but it's good to see him at least being able to walk off. So Ford will be in to attempt this field goal. It's going to be a 50-yard field goal here for Darren Ford. This will be his career long if he makes it. The snap's bobbled. Boss is going to take it. And he's going to run for the first down and runs out of bounds. That was David Boss, the holder, possibly a fake. They did have receivers running out to that right side. I'm not sure if he... And Boss showing off his speed there. Not sure if he bobbled the snap or if he purposely... Put it down and Ford missed it. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be either a way. That's a first down. That's a question for Coach Sturzma after the game in his press conference, which will be undoubtedly asked by one of the media members. So the offense will come back on the field, and Hope may never stop this drive. This has been a very long drive. Apple trots back on. It's He's going to look to snap it here in the pistol set. Hands it off to Campbell, left side. Breaks a couple tackles. He gains about four. Second down. Brandon Campbell will be the running back behind Oppel in the pistol once again. Campbell over that right side. Weaves his way for a gain of about one. Clock continues to tick here is Hope looking to uh, run as much clock off as they possibly can here. So third and five, and you wonder if they get this first down, could they just run this clock out? So they'll go shotgun set here. Takes a snap. He's going to throw. Oppel does throw. He finds Slank over the 10-yard line. 
He's going to be brought down inside the 10, but a great job by Mason Oppel stepping up, seeing his receiver slank in the right side of the field, completing it, moving the chains. And for me, and you said it, if they move the chains, will they uh, be able to continue to run it out? I don't think they, uh, they have time for that just because of how close to the end zone they are. They'll either uh, punch it in here or be stopped. Only three and a half minutes to go, nonetheless. Yeah, first down and goal. So at the Adrian eight yard line, Oppo will be in the pistol with Lee behind him. Handoff over the left side. He gets one block, weaving his way towards the five yard line. Not quite gonna get there. Brought down at the six. We'll have a, a few people we'll have bulldog down there. A few of the training staff comes running out immediately to uh, attend to him. So 3.06 remaining here in this one. As the training staff's out there for Adrian and Hope trying to march their way on to a victory here, 22 to nothing. And it'll be interesting to see what they do. They're gonna try to pound the ball and get it in the end zone one last time here. Adrian trying to keep them out and just uh, keep it a little more respectable would be their only goal at this point is this Hope defense has really, really done a great job here tonight understanding uh, what Adrian has tried to do. And that's uh, try to spread them out, run the ball, but Hope has been able to shut down that run game. They're playing with their backup quarterback, Hunter Ham. They're not letting him get in rhythm. They're pressuring him a lot and making him uncomfortable in the pocket, not allowing him to make any comfortable throws and step into any throws and that has been huge for this hope defense and the hope offense at the same time has controlled the football not turned it over mason apple's done a great job both throwing the ball and running the football here on this homecoming game So this was Trenton Elkins who's walking off the field here with help from the training staff uh, for Adrian, so hope he's okay. So Oppo will come back out here, the quarterback with Lee behind him in the pistol. Three wide receivers. Clock back running here as they'll wait. Bring it down close to uh, close to zero as it's 10 seconds now. Oppo will take the snap. Option right. Pitches it out to Lee. He's going to run towards the edge and run out of bounds for a gain of a couple. Still going to be third down and goal here. Hope trying to punch it in one last time. Jake Kozlowski, the big tight end, comes on in. Chris Kelly, the H-back, comes out. So a different formation, different package coming in for Hope College. Here in the goal line. Oppo will be in the shotgun with Chris Lee to his right. Takes a snap. He wants to throw. Throws left, that one batted at the line of scrimmage and falls incomplete, it'll bring up fourth down. And we'll see if Hope decides to kick a field goal and just tack on a few more points if they're, or if they want to uh, keep the offense on. It looks like field goal team will come on here. And Darren Ford leading them. They did fake a field goal or, or botch a snap, we're not quite exactly sure. It was so well executed, we don't know if it was a fake or right. a botched snap here early on in this possession to uh, 
Let's move the chains with David Boss running for the first down, the holder, David Boss. As we'll see him hold this one here for Ford. Bob with the snap again. He's going to run once again. Maybe there are some problems there with the, the snap and the hold. And Boss will just be down by forward progress. And Adrian will take over here with 147 remaining. Down 22 to nothing here at Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. Hope in the lead. 22 nothing over the Bulldogs of Adrian. It looks like it's going to be a good win here for Hope College, moving to 5-1. And 3-0 and and oh in conference play. 3-0 oh in conference play, most importantly. And this team was picked by the coaches to start the year, uh, before the year, to win the MIAA and advance to the Division Three playoffs. And they're on their way to doing just that, improving to 3-0 and oh after they take care of business here. And when the clock hits zero, it'll be official. But uh, this team... Um, doing all the right things they need to do. Just that one loss in the, the opener to Monmouth, down at Monmouth. The tough game. Ham's going to throw. He finds McGaw. He's going to be brought out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That puts McGaw near uh, the 100-yard mark for the game. He's had a heck of a game today. Yeah, he's been one of the bright spots for this Adrian team offensively team that hasn't scored yet but that pass completed to Cleary or gain of about five yeah and talking about McGaw I mean he has been very active in this offense all night long he's got nine receptions for 96 yards almost over that century mark like you mentioned for me He's definitely a shifty wide receiver. We see Ham hand it off now. That's Nutter over the left side. He's going to pick up a first down and more. Gets himself out to the 43-yard line. Be a first down here as the clock stops here while they move the chains. Let's hope defense trying to preserve the shutout that they pitched so far. Ham fakes the handoff. He's going to throw. He's got McGaw over the 50-yard line, steps out of bounds to stop the clock, and McGaw is over that century mark as a receiver here tonight. Can't say enough about the effort he's put in in tonight's game. He doesn't have a lot of size, but he's, he's quick, he's shifty, and uh, he's had a heck of a game so far. Yeah, there's no question. Here's Ham now. He's going to hand it off. Right up the middle to David Nutter, and he's going to get down to the 41-yard line. This will be a timeout called now by Adrian to stop the clock with 24 seconds remaining. In the At this point, quarter. they're just prolonging the game here. Yeah, they're trying to get on the board. They want to avoid the shutout and make it tough on Hope's defense to get the shutout. And Hope's defense uh, trying to rise to the to the occasion to uh, to keep that high-powered offense to a shutout. Yeah, absolutely, an offense that was averaging close to 500 yards a game. They've come in here and they only have 218 yards. Not, not sure how much you can attribute that to uh, the rainy, wet conditions. Um, but it certainly didn't help. So here's Ham. He's going to throw out left. He's got that one completed. Cleary's going to be pushed out of bounds. Looked like he possibly got the first down, but did step out before the first down mark. It'll be second down and one here with 17 seconds remaining. Ham to throw. He's going to go towards the end zone intended for McGaw. That ball just short and thrown inside of McGaw. He give him credit there for going to the end zone, taking their shot. I mean, they, they don't want to be shut out. And, you know, this is the only way to do it. You got to go towards the end zone here with 11 seconds remaining. Third down and one. 
So they will have a couple more plays left. A couple times they can go at the end zone if that's what they're going to choose to do. Hunter Ham, the backup quarterback, thrown into duty today after uh, Clayton Euchre was hurt last week. They're going to try to get that first down. Here's David Nutter. He does get that first down. Four seconds remaining, and Adrian will call a timeout to stop the clock, and you assume they'll just go for the end zone here with one last play and hope we'll run away with a victory, whether it's 22 to nothing or 22 to 6. 22-6, 22-7, uh, we'll see. Another key in this ball game for me, we talk about Mason Oppel a lot, but this punt team has done a good job for Hope College uh, so far. Darren Ford's had some great punts. He's got some great blocks by guys like Luke Staney in there, um, big number 69. And you've seen him take on a couple of blockers that are trying to block his punts. We're going to have a field goal here. They're just trying to avoid the shutout. Hope going for the block. And the kick is good. So that will end this game 22-3, to three, kind of a three cheap points there at the end here from Ray and Sue Smith Stadium, but on homecoming, Good win. Hope picks up the victory, 22 to three over the Adrian Bulldogs. Clayton Safey, alongside Fermin Duran, thank you for joining us once again. Hope wins, 22 to three on homecoming over Adrian. We've intentionally never had minimum account sizes. Our philosophy has always been, if you're willing to put in the work and we'll collaborate and we set the plan in place and you're willing to go along with this plan and to put forth effort to this plan, we're happy to work with you. It's what we love to do. And so we have people coming in from the very starting point um, all the way to, um, you know, to the wealthy people. It's all different scenarios. Financial planning is not just for the wealthy.